There are two trend waves these days. First one is making photos with that vintage look as if they were shot on a film camera. And second is of course the latest iPhone 16 lineup. And at a glance, these are absolutely two different things. Because an iPhone produces overexposed HDR photos that are the opposite of the film look. And we can't just add more filters to the photo because it's already processed, it's already artificial. Starting with probably the iPhone 13 lineup, the photos coming from the iPhone's default camera became overtuned, so to say. The shadows were raised too much up and the highlights were lowered too much down. On one side, it's great, we're not losing any information, neither in shadows nor in highlights, and let's be honest, we got used to it. But one can get tired of it, especially in the era of AI. So I truly understand people who decided to stand out and move to a more vintage yet natural film look. So today I'll be testing the Process Zero, a new mode introduced by Halide, one of the most popular camera apps for the iPhones. They claim that there is almost no processing done to the photo and it's actually just a single photo straight up from the sensor. So no stacking of multiple shots, no computational photography, just one shot. Completely different from what Apple is doing. And to make the things even more interesting, I'll compare the results of the iPhone 16 Pro with Process Zero to another two smartphones which have huge 41 megapixel sensors, they take one photo at a time, and also they have camera buttons. It's Nokia A08 PureView and Nokia Lumia 1020. And let's see which one of those camera buttons is worth pressing. It's Alex here, welcome to the Geek's Table, and as always, before we go into details, there is a guessing game for you. Don't forget to post your result in the comments, and good luck! I hope it was relatively easy this time. I've done almost zero editing of the actual files. And speaking of the files, let's dive into more details now. The output files are quite different on all three smartphones. Nokia 808 can't shoot raw, so it gives me a massive 4 to 1 megapixel JPEG. 
On the contrary, Lumia 1020 does shoot RAW, so it produces a 41 megapixel DNG file, so all good there. And the iPhone 16 Pro gives me a 12 megapixel RAW file with the process zero enabled. You may ask, but why is it only 12 megapixels and not 48? Well, it's a restriction from Apple. You may either get a 48 megapixel full resolution processed Pro RAW or just 12 megapixels pure RAW. And it's really great to compare these unprocessed photos with the Nokia phones, which no doubt have their own characters and looks. And if we zoom in, we'll see that all three phones give that natural grain, which so many photographers prefer to have. Now let's zoom out for a moment and look at the Pro Raw photo captured at the same time. It doesn't look that different from here, does it? But let's zoom in again. And now we see how polished and processed the Pro Raw photo looks. It's not a bad thing, it's just different. If we look at another example, here you would immediately see the difference even without zooming. But let's zoom in a bit anyways, and sadly only a bit, we can't crop that much on a 12 megapixel photo. And you know what, let me know in the comments if the photos with the grain look more real to you, because for me they definitely do. Alright, let's move on, and I really want to emphasize that the Process Zero doesn't turn your new shiny camera sensor into an old and slow one. In fact, let's have a look at these photos, shall we? And yeah, it will be mostly architecture today, sorry about that, it's just what I normally take photos of. So anyway, here we can see that the Lumia's result is way overexposed. But it's a RAW file, so we could try to pull the exposure down a bit and try to recover the highlights. Unfortunately though, the sky is way overexposed and the smartphone sensors were not that mighty back in the days. So in order to have something useful, I had to take another better exposed shot and if I hadn't, the shot would have been lost forever. And then I had a similar situation but with the iPhone 16 Pro. This is a 12 megapixel Process Zero raw shot, a single shot, so I didn't expect much. But thanks to the modern sensor, I actually can recover the blown highlights and have a good result to work with. So even though it captures a single RAW photo, but because it's much better sensor, it produces a marvelous RAW file that may be forgiving some of my mistakes. I'm saying some mistakes and not all of them, because we do need to know our limits. In this case, if we try to recover the highlights, we might want to stop a bit earlier, because the clouds get this magenta tint. Of course, we can easily remove it later, but that's an extra step worth being prepared for. Since we've touched upon overexposing, let's have a look at a few more photos, and do pay attention to the sky. Notice how overexposed it is, yet it looks quite natural. And that's actually a nice trick to give your photos that filmy look. You're exposed to the buildings or other darker objects in your frame and the sky gets blown away. And that's good because it should behave like that. When you make the darkest objects brighter, the brightest objects just become white. But again, I will reiterate that it's up to you and your taste. Here is the Pro Raw HDR photo for instance and it preserved the sky compared to the Nokia camera phones. So if you wish to go with that look, you definitely can. Another thing that we usually lose when shooting HDR photos with an iPhone's default camera is the contrast. The iPhone 16 Pro is a bit better compared to its predecessor, but I do enjoy how the Process Zero handles it. I think the difference is obvious, and we know that Pro Raw has actually a more reduced processing compared to the JPEGs coming from the default camera. So it's already not the worst result to deal with. But okay, let's switch to the next photo, and I've already mentioned that the Nokia 808 has a built-in ender filter, which is amazing knowing how old this smartphone is. And when set to automatic, it turns on during a sunny day when the picture is too bright. In that case, the photos may have that shady, greeny look. It's okay, but you can't unsee it. Process Zero doesn't have it, and it shouldn't, but if we look at the Pro Raw, for some reason, it's there. Even though obviously there is no ND filter built into the iPhone. And worth noting that it doesn't happen all the time. 
And that's the main problem with the modern photography. If you have similar light conditions in different moments of time, and you set your phone camera to the exact same settings, it won't produce similar photos. Because every time the processing will be different, the image stacking will be different, the noise reduction will be different, so no surprise that the result will be different. Of course it's not the case with the DSLRs or mirrorless cameras and even these older smartphones. There you just set the settings, you know what to expect, and you are getting the expected result. And I'm happy to say that the Process Zero actually joins this league. It does a good job in producing similar looking images, because obviously the processing is gone. But sometimes the result may look a bit desaturated. Maybe it's just me being used to oversaturated mobile photos, I don't know. And obviously these slightly desaturated photos have their character and we may leave them be, but I prefer to give it a little bit more punch in post. Looks slightly better to me. For this video I've been developing the photos with the Lightroom on my iPad and I've noticed that whenever I open the process zero photo, then by default it sets the whites to plus 15 and blacks to minus 5. I assumed it had to be zero everywhere out of the box, but apparently it's not. Another thing that I've discovered recently may actually help you to handle HDR photos. Have a look. This is the process zero photo, very nice looking one, a good starting point to edit. And this is the Pro Raw photo, and it looks just awful. So in order to remove this punchy HDR look, go to the Edit tab, then hit Browse, and instead of the Pro Raw, select Adobe Standard. And then it will be a better starting point to develop your Pro Raw image. If you're into night photography, then probably the Process Zero is not for you. Even the creators of Halide suggest avoiding using the Process Zero in low light. And it makes sense, it's just physics. A small sensor, just one photo, it's simply not enough light captured and too much noise left unprocessed. So once the sun is set, I am the fan of Pro Raw again. I really prefer their look to Process Zero. But again, tastes differ, so I'm pretty sure there will be people who would prefer the Process Zero shot, and that's totally fine. Concluding, I want to point out that the Process Zero mode is not for everyone and it's not for everything. If you prefer this punchy HDR look, use the default camera. If you enjoy the processing and smoothing but need to tweak the results in the post, you can use Pro Raw or Halide's own processed mode. But if you wish to add more character to your photos, make them look more natural and you're obsessed with grain, then definitely try the process zero. Just know the limitations and don't hesitate to switch to the other modes if you're unhappy with the results. Luckily, it's just two taps away. As for our usual contestants, the Nokia phones, they are doing great even now after so many years. What previously could be treated as a disadvantage or poor quality has now become a trend. They do have their charm, their history, they require you to invest time in setting up the parameters before you push that shutter button, and I could easily see myself launching an Instagram account with the photos made purely with these phones. And maybe someday Halide will introduce Process 808 and Process 1020. I hope this video was entertaining, and if it was, hit a like and consider subscribing, and maybe if you enjoyed this video, Watch a similar one with the iPhone 15 Pro stacked up against these phones. It's a little bit different, yet quite interesting. It's been Alex and see you at the Geek's Table. Bye bye.